Hello and welcome to Adventures of Words, where we explore storytelling in all its forms. I'm Rob. I'm Kate. And this week we're going to look at some of the books that are out in January. So we're going past Christmas and into the new year. So this is something that we talked about doing to uh, start to give you a bit more of an insight into some of the things to look out in the in the coming month. So uh, something that I actually do as part of my job, which is... Uh, something I find really interesting is to submit to the bookseller magazine. So that's kind of a trade magazine which is read by booksellers and people in publishing and you can also um, subscribe to it, um, you know, as a non-bookseller as well if you want to, if you're interested. Mm, I've seen it in W.H. Smith before. Yeah, yeah. and um, basically it just gives you an insight into the publishing trade and things that are coming out um, and kind of different things that are going on in publishing. And as part of that, it uh, sums up you know titles that are coming out in the future. So back in October, uh, it was looking at uh, sort of previews of fiction and then non-fiction and also paperbacks and children's titles that were coming out in January. So this was uh, then, you know, a little while before that, I was actually sending those in as part of my job at Vintage, which was quite interesting. So lots of other people, whether they're kind of editorial assistants or marketing assistants, whoever that might be, were doing the same for various other publishing houses. And then if you're in a, a bookshop or if you're, you know, wherever else you might be having a look at this and having a look at what other titles are coming out around mm. the publishing industry and yeah. that's, uh, that's certainly what I do so you send them in the bookseller publishes <laughs> them and then I read them and decide what we're going to sell <laughs> in bookshops so it works quite well and it you know it's uh, a chance to see what might be big uh, yeah in a few months time what might be in the shop so it's also a chance for you guys to see what's coming out and to think about what you might like to read so we thought we would um yeah then this is all getting very meta isn't it it is a little bit <laughs> sort yeah. of how many levels of picking is this but so uh there's a few people who have picked so we're this is our picks of someone else's picks of someone else's picks of what are good picks of uh, of January titles? Shall we start the picks? You <laughs> Let's go first. start Let, picking. You go first. Um, so I'm going to pick uh, a book that I picked. <laughs> so this is probably um, one of the things that uh, I was most excited to see. It's actually some time ago when I realised that Vintage were publishing this. So this is a book that Vintage is publishing. It's actually coming out from Jonathan Cape. And I was really, really excited about this. Um, a little while ago, I... If you're listening to the podcast, um, and we were talking about the Booker Prize, and I wasn't that excited when Julian Barnes won the Booker Prize because I hadn't read anything by him previously. I didn't really understand the hype about him. But I read Levels of Life, and I just suddenly got it. And I just thought Levels of Life was extraordinary. It was so beautiful and so poignant. It just worked for me it was such an extraordinary combination and I there was no way that I would have thought that a combination of the history of hot air ballooning and grief would have worked as a combination and it just did and this time in the noise of time Julian Barnes is writing about Shostakovich um, in Soviet Russia and it's kind of a historical piece and it's political and it's about what it was like for Shostakovich in that time trying to write the music that he was writing. It's not a long book. Um, I've actually got a proof of this at work. I haven't read it yet because I'm kind of saving it. It just feels quite special um, but it's out. it's out at the end of January and uh yeah it's it's quite a plain cover it's it looks like um brown um parcel paper mm. you know the kind of texture of the paper and it's just a a man with dark glasses and a suitcase like quite a plain cover um but yeah i'm really excited really excited genuinely for that to come out so oh yeah fun and, and i am as well short version there we go. Uh, the next one I was going to pick is one I've mentioned before, but it's finally out now, so this is almost like a reminder for you, which is uh, Fiona Barton's The Widow, which is a debut. Uh, it, 
And the idea sort of appeals to me is that sometimes, you know, when you see in the papers on TVs, um, someone, you know, a man's accused of some horrible crime, but yet his wife is there um, sticking by him. And this is sort of a fictionalised account of that, although I believe Fiona Barton is a, um, used to be a journalist. Uh, this tells the story of Jean Taylor, an ordinary woman whose husband might have been a murderer. Now she's dead and she's talking to the press. Oh, here we are. The author was a journalist and this is a cracker of a read with many talking points and it's been picked out by the bookseller as next year's The Girl on the Train. So, yeah, it's that kind of, um, yeah, that kind of thrillery background. Um, but, yeah, slightly different. And I I quite like the fact it's not The Girl on the or The Girl with the. It's The Widow. So it's maybe mm. slightly more grown up. Um Something else that's on that page is um, The Trouble with Goats and Sheep, uh, which is from the Borough Press uh, by Joanna Cannon. And this is under a, a kind of, well, it's it's called Commercial. In the summer of 1976, Mrs Creasy has gone missing and the avenue is alive with whispers. Grace and Tilly are only 10 years old but decide to have a go investigating. They want to find out what happened to Mrs Creasy and while they're at it, what God is all about. This is an intriguing mystery. The innocence of the children contrasts well with the nastiest suspicions of the grown-ups. The author worked as a doctor before specialising in psychiatry. Uh, she's the first mentee from the Woe Mentoring Project to get a book deal. Ah. Um now, so. this is something I've heard so many people talking about, how good it is. I haven't read a proof of this. Um, I'm purely going on word of mouth here. Um, but I've heard so many people raving about this book, The Trouble with Goats and Sheep. Um, this is also out on the 28th of January, 12.99 in hardback. Um, Joanna Cannon, The Trouble with Goats and Sheep. This is another thing I really, really want to read. It's quite a plain cover kind of light blue and it's got just a goat I think in right in the middle of the cover um yeah it just looks really fun and I quite like that idea it reminds me of um oh god I can't it'll come back to me there's a there's a very famous um it's just called spies maybe yeah Jonathan Frain Jonathan Frain Michael Michael Frayne. I'm mixing that up with Jonathan Franson for some reason. My brain is really bad for <laughs> names this evening. I'm so sorry. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, Michael Frayne, Spies. That's what it's making me think of, where the two little boys are hiding in the hedge and they imagine that the, the man is a Nazi spy. I think mm. that's what it's making me think of. But it's obviously it's a slightly different idea there. So it's the, the older woman's gone missing. But yeah, I th I'm really intrigued by that. Mm. So yeah, really fancy giving that one a try. It sounds great. The next one that caught my eye is Yet More Crime, and it's another debut. This is The Good Liar by Nicholas Searles. This is out in Harback on the 14th. Twists and turns galore in this tale of Roy, an elderly con man who uses internet dating sites to find lonely wealthy women to befriend and defraud. As he follows Roy's pursuit of Betty, we go back in time and see how he grew into the man he is. Will Roy pull off this final coup, or is there more in play than he knows? A highly satisfying thriller, and I like this intriguing line from the author's biography. He is not allowed to say any more about his career than he was a senior civil servant for many years. Even a bit of intrigue about the author there. Yeah, that's always fun. Yeah. And um, just above that, I notice um, Caroline Kepneys, Kepneys mm -hmm. um, Hidden Bodies, that's published by Simon & Schuster. It's out on the 14th of January. How can we resist a psychopathic bookseller? Well, that's a question you ask yourself every day. Well, indeed. <laughs> you know, it's too late for me. Um, Joe, the hero of you, is back, looking for love and murdering people who get in his way. Um, here's... Sorry, I'm just trying to read this over Rob's shoulder slightly. His stalking takes him to LA where he becomes embroiled in a super rich family who take him into their hearts as well as to Chateau Marmont. Can Joe learn to love his new lifestyle or will his past catch up with him? Full of smart observations and jokes on modern life, this is a riveting read that will have you rooting for Joe to get away with murder. So that's, uh, I think, her second book. Um, her first one, as it suggests there's called you uh, this kind of recurring character called joe it's this sort of strange and um slightly evil um kind of anti-hero uh, but yeah kind of interesting and a bit nasty but uh, very intriguing i had another pick uh this one just just sort of intrigued me actually this one is the happy marriage it's out by it's out from melville house and it's by tahar ben Jalon, I think it is. It's out on the 21st. It's a book written in secret by a painter about his failing marriage. It's found by his wife, who then gives her own versions of events. Mm. So, yeah. 
pretty, that's literally one sentence, and that's that's hooked me on that one. I'm that sounds really that interesting. One. Disclaimer: This is a vintage one, a guide to Berlin by Gail Jones. Um, it's a Harvel Secker hardback. It's out on the 14th. Well, it's actually well trade paperback. Uh, the friendship of a group of visitors to Berlin who meet to discuss Nabokov is shattered by a sudden act of violence. Um, the cover, I really think, is just beautiful. It's just these series of lines all into interweaving um and it's a really lovely book um it hasn't been one of the big picks but it's a, it is a really lovely it's a really lovely read and it's kind of going a little bit under the radar but i'd highly recommend uh, i know um i can see a couple of uh, books here a couple of patrick modiano books he's a a nobel prize winning uh, writer uh, in the cafe of lost youth and um the black notebook and these are being published by McElhose press uh, because uh, you know because of his uh, nobel prize win so they're coming out with uh, McElhose in january Hmm. I'd forgotten a guide to Berlin was one of yours. That's mm-hmm. one that I, I spotted as well. Uh-huh. So maybe, well someone we could, maybe someone <laughs> could bring me home. Oh, maybe they could. Um, another nice premise, just simple one sentence, is Anne Morgan beside herself. This is out on the 14th from Bloomsbury. Twins Helen and Ellie swap places for fun, but Ellie refuses to swap back. <laughs> yeah, interesting. <laughs> nice. All right, going further forward, uh, is there anything else that's caught your eye there? Uh, let these me are all because we're going look. through these are all the hardbacks, by the way, and we'll go through paperbacks in a moment. I'm intrigued. Now, um, just having a quick look, uh, the jacket of uh, Paula- Paulina and Fran uh, was one that I've seen online, and um, I'd really noticed actually. And this is something that was uh, out from Granta on the seventh of January. Paulina and Fran meet at a house party near their New England art school, a story of intense friendship and the disappointments of adulthood. And the the jacket is just fantastic. It's this woman uh, with a wonderful fur coat. She's in black and white. And then the uh, background is this kind of intense, bright pink with a, with a blue stripe down the middle. Um, yeah. So that's by Rachel B. Glazer out from Granta on the 7th of January. And it just, yeah, it just really, really caught my eye. It looks brilliant. Right. Shall we go on to the next set then? Let's have a look. This is, so this one is, uh, we're going to non-fiction now. We'll go back to paperbacks. Uh, non-fiction in January tends to be, well, it's dominated a lot by New Year, New You. Mm, so this is. is this is a self-help diet it's the start of the year people look back and that you're doing new year's resolutions aren't you mm. i want to lose weight i want to learn how such and such so a lot of it is that um the one that caught my eye in non-fiction actually is where are we fragments this is by elena ferrante so she's best known for her neapolitan mm-hmm. set of novels which i yeah. haven't actually read yet which i do need to but uh, if you're a fan of hers, then this is a collection of her, they call it Occasional Writings, Interviews and Letters, addressing subjects such as her choice to m- remain anonymous, her literary inspirations, politics and culture and the role of the writer in modern society. Very interesting. So if you are you just finished the last novel, then uh, you can pick up some of her non-fiction. Anything for you on the non-fiction list? Um, I mean, to be honest, lots of things are, as you say, it's kind of mainly self-helpy type things. There weren't loads of things that stood out to me. Let me see. I know that yeah, Ruby Wax's um, Frazzled might be a bit more interesting. Well, the, it's actually called A Mindfulness Guide for the Frazzled. So that might be a bit more interesting than the usual. Hmm. There's also the Empire of Things, How We Became a World of Consumers, um, which is by Frank Trent uh, Trentman. That's from Alan Lane. Yeah, which is all, all about yeah consuming kind of capitalism and the idea of kind of collecting things around us. Yeah, I was intrigued by this one, which is, it's got a nice long title, but it's super better, How a Game for Life Can Make You Stronger, Happier, Braver and More Resilient. And this is by Jane McGonagall from Harper. Th- Harper Thorson's on the mm-hmm. 28th. 
and it's after suffering a brain injury, McGonagall came up with an innovative game to help aid her recovery and battle the ensuing depression she experienced. A quarter of a million other people have now played this game with astonishing results. Even terminal cancer patients report that the game gives them a sense of control over their own health. McGonagall uses her own story and those of others to demonstrate how simple changes can result in dramatic, life-affirming effects. She is now one of the most powerful women to watch, according to Forbes. I'm just intrigued as to what the game is, mm. actually. See what well, it's like. they don't yeah. want to give it away. Don't do want to they? give it away in there. No. Uh, next on the list, it's the children's preview, children's and YA. So I know there's one book that you're particularly keen. Well, there which is, is. The paperback. Um, yeah. So there's a paperback of something which I've already talked about quite a lot on the podcast, and um, I'm sure that listeners will remember. Um, I spoke to you, Lisa Williamson, about. The Art of Being Normal, which is her first novel, and this is all about, well, it's all about the idea of a young boy who is struggling with his um, kind of identity and how he views himself and actually what his normal is, and it's about basically gender identity, and Mm. Lisa was inspired to write this after working at a gender identity clinic, basically, and I read this kind of very early in the year, and really, really loved it, actually, Mm. and so this, yeah, the paperback's coming out basically a year after the hardback, and I would encourage anyone who's interested in kind of reading diverse fiction um anyone who's interested in reading young adult fiction um to to give it a go basically i thought it was really really good um it's incredibly well written i thought it was really um touching really perceptive yeah i thought it was great lisa is incredibly sweet and really funny as well and she's had a really interesting um kind of journey in her career to get to the point at which she is now if you want to hear more about the art of being normal, then there's a whole podcast where I chat to her and talk more about the book. So I won't talk loads about it now, but obviously just go back to, you know, go to iTunes or go to the website and just search for the art of being normal and you'll get the, you know, you'll mm. get the podcast and you can listen to me chatting to Lisa all about the story. And yeah, you'll find out what we thought about it. Mm-hmm. So there we go. Um, so there's that. Uh, but there's also a couple of other things which caught my eye. Um, I noticed that Tom Ellen and Lucy Iverson's new book is out um, in January. It's out on the 7th. It's called Never Evers. And it's six ninety nine in paperback from Chicken House. So Lobsters was their first one. Uh, <laughs> you're nodding now. Yeah, it's just dawned on me now. Yes, we saw them at... Um... Not Yalk, the uh, YA, YA literature. literature. Yes, uh, yes, at the South Bank. They're they're really they're really nice. Um, they write as a duo, and um, yeah, lobsters is a reference to the idea which comes from I think Friends and this yeah. kind of urban legend <laughs> type thing that lobsters mate for life. Which apparently they don't. <sighs> But it's nice to think, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you should yeah, have seen the, the look the, I got just, just then. Because that's that's kind of a spoiler. That's, but never oh, mind. Right. Anyway. Well, that's just all Wikipedia. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's the whole thing in Friends where Phoebe says to Ross, you know, Rachel's your lobster. Hmm. Yeah, there's that, there's that yeah, whole yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah, so that's where the name of that book comes from, that they, they think that you know, they they have to find their lobster, basically, in the first book. Um, and I really enjoyed that one. So this is their second one, and it's set on a school ski trip, which just, to me, says mm. all sorts of hilarious slash cringeworthy shenanigans. Um, if anyone has ever been on a kind of geography or other field trip, um, I know what mine were like, so I can only imagine what a ski trip would be like. Um, although it sounds like, yeah, these uh, the protagonists are 14, so it's a bit younger, so it won't be quite as rude as Lobsters was. Um, the people in Lobsters, it's, it's actually set after they finish their A-levels. Oh, so it's yeah. a bit ruder, that one, whereas this, is, this will obviously be a bit more innocent. That's probably a deliberate choice because I think there was some discussion around whether Lobsters was a bit too rude in inverted commas. But if you read the back, it was quite clear what the age range was. So there we go. But 
I mean, it was very funny. I don't think it was inappropriate. There wasn't, you know, there wasn't really bad language. Nothing was dealt with in a way that I felt was inappropriate. So I'm sure this will be really good. I noticed there's a really nice looking picture book um, called Oh Wait, Mr. Panda by Steve Anthony. And I, I really like his style of illustration. There's this panda recurring panda character that he has, mm. which is really cute. And that's out uh, on the 14th. So that's a nice a nice panda picture book. Uh, and there's also um, a book uh, called Marisi uh, by Maria, let me try and get the surname right, Tetshaninov. Tetshaninov? Don't ask me. I think. I'll just mangle it. So the book's called Marisi. It's out from Pushkin. So it's a young adult from Pushkin Press. Um, I'm quite a fan of Pushkin, actually. They've got some really interesting things. I have seen um, quite a few young adult book bloggers be sent proofs of this. I haven't been, and I'm quite jealous because the proof packages look really lovely. So I'm not bitter, though, but it's just it's quite exciting to see people opening them. Um, and it does mean I'm quite excited to read the book. You know, the hype has worked. Uh, so... Uh, the write-up says, dark, powerful and original. This is a first title in the Red Abbey Chronicles and it really stands out in a very crowded YA marketplace. Maurice lives on a secret island inhabited solely by women, a safe haven where women can flourish and learn, but when danger looms, the, uh, they must use their powers and ancient knowledge to combat the threat. Thrilling, suspenseful and gloriously feminist, Pushkin is supporting with a major PR and marketing push. Winner of the Finlandia Junior Prize, this has been translated into English by Annie Prime. So it's in translation. Um, it's a new author. Uh, yeah, it's really intriguing actually. It's a the, the cover looks like two hair combs. Hmm. Um, kind of one at the top, one at the bottom facing each other. Uh, yeah, quite intrigued by that really. So All there right. we go, that's a few children's picks for you. Which means we must now be on the paperbacks for January. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, uh, just quickly going through the paperback of The Girl in the Red Coat, Kate Hamer. So, you interviewed her. I did. As part of this book yeah, I really enjoyed reading the hardback. Really enjoyed that. Then, a few others Blood, in the, Blood on Snow, which is one of yours. Yeah, um, uh, I've actually not read that, um, but I am a big fan of the um, Harry Hole Joe Nesbos. Hmm. Um, I noticed A Year of Living Danishly. Um, <laughs> interesting pun there on dangerously. But that's about kind of taking on a. Uh, Scandinavian lifestyle uh, and I also noticed the chimes there which uh, was the scepter book which was nominated for uh, the man booker prize yeah. didn't I was on the long list didn't make it to the short list but uh, I really enjoyed the opening section of that which I read we've got your obligatory James Patterson private Sydney I don't think I've ever read a James Patterson but uh, you're never far away from one, put it that way. Uh, we've got the paperback of Kate Atkinson, A God in Ruins. Yeah, I absolutely loved, absolutely loved Life After Life, which I finally read this year. It's probably one of my books of the year, actually. Fantastic. I've got the hardback of A God in Ruins, and I haven't read that yet, uh, partly because I'm a bit scared and I don't want to spoil it because I've got a signed copy. Spy Out the Land, which is the fourth book by Jeremy Duns. I've read his other books uh this is part of the paul dark series so it starts off with free country this time it was set in the 60s and this one is set in 1975 in which the double agent's family is kidnapped simon seuss is saying that duns's detailed research will provide extra content and reader notes all right anything else that catches your eye there so mm -hmm. paperbacks tend to be obviously their releases of the hardbacks we might have already spoken about some of these uh, there's there's so much I think that's partly the problem there are so many really interesting things and I'm sure there'll be things that we don't mention just because there's uh, so much to choose from oh, I see there's uh, the unexpected inheritance of Inspector Chopra now I'm sure people have been talking mm. about Inspector Chopra here I remember people mentioning uh, that name to me I think that might be a, a Simon and Gav uh, recommendation oh, yeah. there. First in a new series, it says. Uh, A.L. Kennedy writing Doctor Who. Doctor wow. Who, the Drosten's Curse, the award-winning literary novelist, takes on Doctor Who with the story of something huge, ancient and alien beneath the ground in our Arbroath. Well, 
That is extraordinary. Yeah. Oh, I can see one straight away. Um, Rebecca Levine, The Hunter's Kind, Hodder Paperbacks, book two of The Hollow Gods, in which Goatherd um, Krishna, uh, Krishanjit has learned he's the son of the king and a moon god reborn and sets out to fight his murderous father. Uh, the first one of those was incredible, actually. Really interesting. Um not anything like the kind of fantasy and science fiction that I'd read before. Much more kind of ambivalent. You don't you didn't have like an obvious hero where you thought, right, this is someone I can get behind. But it was on this kind of huge scope. Um, you know, this kind of really big scope, similar to Game of Thrones, but without the kind of obvious goodies and baddies. Mm. Um, so it was a very different experience reading it, uh, but really fascinating. And I, I must read that second part. I really must. And perhaps we'll finish on these two. So these are the ones that I've just spotted. Vanessa Tate, The Looking Glass House. Vanessa Tate is the great, great, sorry, the great granddaughter of Alice Liddell, the girl who inspired Lewis Carroll's Alice. Mm. She reimagines the origins of the classic story through the eyes of a governess desperate to become Carol's muse. And we'll do it. Well, this kind of brings it back full circle about book selling. Uh, the paperback of Starborn by Lucy Hansen is out from Pan on the 28th. Uh, it's the story of Ke uh, Kendra flees her small village when she disrupts an ancient ceremony, ending up in a hidden citadel where she experiences visions of the past and undergoes a brutal test to unlock unlock her own magic. And it just so happens that Lucy is a bookseller for Waterstones. Oh, there you so go. there we are. Come, come full circle. So <laughs> that's just some of the picks uh, that we've got for January. We'll be back towards the end of January with our picks for February and so on and so on. So yes, that will be a kind of a regular feature, as it were, going forward. If any of those uh, caught your eye or you've got a book recommendation for us that we should be reading in January, then do get in touch. You can do that in many ways. You can email us, contact at adventuresofthewords.com, send us a tweet, we're at Word Adventures. Head on over to our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash adventureswithwords. We're on Instagram. We're on YouTube much more now. You might even be listening to this on YouTube. So, hello, you can't see us, but we are here. But you uh, can hear you us. You can hear us. We are uploading more and more to YouTube, including some of the back catalogue. All our Christmas podcasts are on there now. We're going to go through and put up the Man Booker ones as they are one of our most popular ones. Um, so thank you very much if you are listening on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And you can also head over, over to the blog, adventurethewords.com, where you can leave a comment under any of our posts. So we, we thought we'd let you know about the schedule over the next coming weeks. So next week uh, we'll be doing our short Star Wars reaction as the, the film is finally here. Yes, Rob is very excited. We booked tickets some time ago. We're going for the full uh, the full experience. We're seeing it in 3D IMAX, so yep. we may be um, deafened. blinded and <laughs> deafened as a result, but uh, we'll do our best. Uh, so we're probably not going to do a full podcast next weekend because... We're expecting that, you know, just to need some recovery time, but we'll do a kind of a, a quick reaction podcast to Star Wars. No spoilers, because that's not... No, no, obviously no spoilers, no. but, you know, we'll we'll just give you our, our quick reactions. And then we're hitting the seasonal period. So as is now traditional, we've... Uh, if you've been following us on Twitter, you'll probably know we've actually already recorded our Christmas special. So that's in the can. We've got uh, Simon of um, Savage Reads and the Readers and Gav, formerly of um, the Readers and uh, Here Read This. Well, and, yeah, Here know, Read This colleagues. Yep. Exactly. And uh, we invited them over. Uh, to a, a kind of fictional version of Simon's Front Room to play book chase with us. So uh, you, you'll be able to hear that delightful board game. You know, it's traditional to play a board game on Christmas Day. So you'll be able to hear that on Christmas Day, slightly worse for wear, <laughs> and, um, you know, all getting along and uh, chatting about various books and films and whatnot that we've uh, experienced over 2015. And then uh, what we'll do is our kind of round up and review of 2015, as we have done for the last couple of years, with our traditional now categories. And we'll we'll have that with you on, what, New Year's Day? New Year's, New Year's Day. We'll do it New Year's Day. Yeah. Yep. See you in the new year by looking back at the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> So that's it. Next week will be a short Star Wars one, then we'll be back on Christmas Day, and then we'll be back on New Year's Day. 
and then we'll and then we'll be back, back into the, the normal routine. Normal routine, whichever the next Sunday that is. Uh, so that's all for this week. If you'd like to follow me during the week, you can do that on Twitter and Instagram at Rob Shaw. And if you'd like to follow me during the week, I'm at Magic underscore Kitten on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for listening. Bye.